We're heading into Ellicott City today. Gonna meet up with one of our master students who's been really focusing on 360 video. We're doing a story about the major flooding that they've had in Ellicott City. Aaron's doing some phenomenal 360 video and he's working on some awesome graphics. Here's one of the coolest parts. Insta360 actually lent us an Insta360 Pro to use today. So we're gonna take this out and experiment with it. Aaron Rosa. I am a 360 journalist. We can uh, head around the town and see if we can get some environmental shots of some of the damage that's been done from the uh, Ellicott City flooding. Uh, I took a class at the University of Maryland on immersive storytelling. I thought it was a gimmick, like, you know, you see a 3D movie and you're like, oh, that's cool. And I actually tried it out on a Google Cardboard and it blew my mind and I said, I have to, uh, I have to produce for this. If you're ever using the Pro, you need to make sure that you turn off your mobile data when you're connecting to the Wi-Fi. That took me a long time to figure out. And I'm just gonna take a picture. If you're doing a part of a story where it's just the environment you need and you don't really need any motion in it, I found that it's a little bit more practical to just shoot a picture and then you'll still be able to see it in stereoscopic 3D and you'll be able to interact with it in the same way that you would as a video. It's just a massively lower file size, so you can keep that tip. So I think we'll do that again. Being able to control it from this is super, uh, super handy when you're doing things like going inside of that building and you have a lot of, you know, wreckage around you and it's not safe for you to be inside the building for an extended period of time. Or something like this where we want to get the shot but it's not safe for me to stand in the middle of the road the whole time. We put the camera out there and record it from a distance. We've shot inside the building, so I want to see the outside. We can see uh, the damage behind the scenes as well as um, the outside portion of it. All right, another pro tip. If you're using this camera, <laughs> the battery lasts about an hour. And it takes a while for it to turn on, so if you're doing like journalism type stuff, you never know when the story's gonna happen and you don't have, you know, a minute for it to wait for it to boot up. So I highly recommend buying another battery. That way you don't have to worry about this turning off and running out of battery at the last minute. Well, next up we're gonna take all this footage and we're gonna stitch it all. Uh, with using a stitching box, have that going, you know, make use of the time on the way home. When I get home, hopefully most of this stuff will be stitched up and I'll be able to pull it into Final Cut and uh, start my workflow like a normal video in that, in that uh, program. We're back from our shoot. We've got all the 360 video from Ellicott City and Aaron is starting to put it all together. All right, so after we finished our shoot, we hooked up our computer to the camera and used the stitching box feature to offload the eGPU. So we were able to stitch all that using the camera rather than our computer. That function right there, I think, is just probably the greatest thing that they've come out with other than the camera. So we brought it into Final Cut. I prefer Final Cut. Uh, it's just a little bit more user-friendly to me. It's a little bit more intuitive, and they have really powerful 360 editing features. Once we're done with that, um, we just add a little bit of music to it uh, and edit it just like a normal video. Uh, and then export it. Make sure you guys subscribe. Make sure you check out the video. I'll put the links and everything below.